Great, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you well. Cool. Hello, and thank you for the opportunity to speak. My name is Josh Eisenfeld, that's J-O-S-H-E-I-S-E-N-F-E-L-D, and I'm the Corporate Accountability Campaigner at Earthworks. And I'm from the stolen land of the Osage and Shawnee people, today known as Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I testify here today because of a truth that we all know, that the fate of the people is inextricably intertwined with the health of our environment. The world is changing already, and far too much of that change is out of our control. No longer are we just struggling to stop climate change, we are fighting to mitigate it so that it is a crisis in our lifetime and not a catastrophe in our children's. And so I'm before you today to share my experience with both the industry and the communities that they operate in and urge you to use every tool under the law to cut methane pollution 65% in the next five years. My job at Earthworks is to push oil and gas, the oil and gas industry to close the gro growing chasm between what they say and what they do. I wish I could tell you that companies are keeping their promises. I wish I could tell you that we're curbing methane pollution due to the bold voluntary commitments that companies have made over the last few years. But despite their bold commitments, the science repeatedly shows that methane pollution is on the rise. In fact, it's rising faster than ever and all signs point to oil and gas industry as the major contributor. Representatives of the industry here today have and will say a lot of things that we would all love to be true. They'll say that greenhouse gas pollution is decreasing and natural gas is the reason. That thanks to their voluntary efforts, methane pollution is a problem that they have under their control. That they have already committed to emissions reductions in line with the Paris agreements. But that's not true. My and my organization's work proves that they are not living up to those promises. That all companies that have made methane pollution commitments are also funding to the tune of tens of millions of dollars trade associations that lobby against them. And as the International Energy Agency's most recent report explains, no company with plans to explore new oil fields, which they all are, is in line with the Paris agreements. Furthermore, no company, whether they're making promises to reduce their methane pollution or not, has a solid grasp on just how much they're polluting. How could they? when no company supports rules that require leak checks just one time per month. Think about what that says. And while they will tell you that they care about people and the local economies, no advocate for the industry is getting paid today to lobby to improve the economies of the geographic regions in which they operate. Their measure of success is their bottom line. I say this not to discredit their relevance to, their, to this discussion rather to remind you that they are not paid based on the long-term success of our planet or our country or the health of the residents living next to their operations. Their score of success is only determined by the amount of zeros at the end of their earning statements. The voluntary promises that they make you don't cost them a dollar, but implementing them does. And in a highly competitive economic sector where pennies on the dollar today can make a difference without, and without rules to hold them accountable, why would they prioritize cutting pollution, even when 40 to 50% of these emissions can be mitigated at no net cost? But if there's only one message I could leave you with today, it is this. If the industry succeeds in persuading you to adopt weaker methane rules, it will be at the expense of the communities living with oil and gas operations, and eventually, thanks to climate change, all of us. When you're sitting down at the table to write the rules, remember, the Environmental Protection Agency's mission. And remember that you have the power right now within the Clean Air Act to cut emissions 65% in just five years. And while the industry will surely resist this change as their representatives and employees are paid to do, it will save them money in the long run. Capturing more methane after all is capturing more of their product. But more importantly, it has the potential to save us all from the worst impacts of the climate crisis. You will be saving our planet. For the sake of all of us, I urge you to hold the industry accountable to their word and use the full force of the Clean Air Act to cut methane from new and existing sources. Thank you. Thank you um, for your input. Panel, any questions? Our next speaker is Robert Kleinberg. Robert Kleinberg, are you ready to go? Yes. Okay, I can I, hear you. Very good. 
Uh, good day. Uh, I'm Robert Kleinberg. I'm a senior research scholar at Columbia University and at Boston University. More to the point, I worked for 40, that's four zero years, in the oil and gas industry and have been elected to the National Academy of Engineering in recognition of my contributions to petroleum technology. The Environmental Protection Agency has been charged by President Biden to revise the regulations governing methane emissions from the oil and gas industry. The regulations presently in force are the so-called Quad O and Quad OA subparts of 40 CFR 60. I have studied these regulations in view of my own experience in the industry, and here are my observations. First, in 2016, the Obama administration pledged to reduce methane emissions from the oil and gas sector by 40 to 45% by 2025. This represents 